Thank you, Ava. Um, our final speaker of the day is Patrick Young from the BBC. Patrick, I'm just going to hand straight over to you. Okay, thank you. Get some water. Hi, I'm Pat Young um, from the BBC. I'm the Chief Creative Officer for BBC Television Production. Um, and in, in that role, I'm responsible for about 3,000 staff who make some of the biggest shows that, that you'll all know, Top Gear and Strictly and EastEnders and Casualty and Holby and Luther and things like that. Um, prior to that, I've worked at Channel 4 and ITV, and I've run a cable network in the States. And I'm going to talk about the inspirational amateur, and um, I'm really going to tell you two stories um, which I think speak to the challenge um, of, first of all, how do we make our brands more porous? How do we engage the crowd? How do we let people in? And at the same time, our brands all stand for something. They stand for quality, they stand for curation, they stand for ease of navigation. And if you let everybody in, you end up, you risk creating the Wild West. So how do you create the space for this inspirational amateur uh, to come through? And I've, I've met and I've worked with inspirational amateurs which have definitely driven my business and my business thinking. And the key to it for me is about having an innovation process. For me, innovation is about ideas that create value. That for me is what an innovation is. It's a value creating idea. And I do believe you need a process. Now, where is the clicker? Um, so, in 2005, I was in the States and we were running a show called, we were launching a new show called Five Takes. Five young people traveling around Asia Pacific. Um, and the aim of the show was they would travel and every day they would go online. In those days, this is, this is pre-3G and whatever, they'd have to go to an internet cafe, they'd log on to a message board and people would know where they were going and they could make them recommendations for things to do. And part of the things that the young people had to do was to create every week a two minute video which they shoot and edit themselves which they'd put up online along with their blogs. And we had the, in 2005, quite advanced idea of inviting people to send us uh, a showreel about why they should be on the show. And we had about 1,000 uh, sent in, and we had this inspirational video from Tiffany Burnett. Uh, Tiffany is somebody who had passed up Gandhi, and she sent this film in which basically spoke about uh, growing up in Cathedral City uh, in California. Um, her, her father uh, managed the local theatre. Her mother had these ambitions for her to be on stage. And yet she'd broken out of that. And three times she had turned down the chance to go to university to go travelling. And she was back at university and she'd seen this chance to come on the show and she's prepared for the final time to dip out of university and sort of give up on finishing her degree if she could get on the show. And it was a brilliant inspirational video, and I can't share it with you because she broke every rule going. Um, she used Leonard Skinner, she used Britney Spears, she used pictures that she didn't have cleared and didn't have copyright. But it showed us that there was a different sort of film that could be made. This is 2005, don't forget. A different, you know, MySpace was big, nobody had heard of YouTube. Um, a different sort of film that could be made about a more personal sort of travel journalism, and we were inspired by that. Um, but we also got a lot of this. We had a lot of that. Um, and so the challenge for us is, OK, we're about to send Tiffany off around, around the Asia Pacific. We need to train her up. So we created a four-day boot camp to train up Tiffany and the other travellers, we called them TJs, TJ, travel journalists, so that they can make decent, watchable films that people would actually engage with. Um, it's time to show you how with a language
But I have to move with instinct. I can't rely on anything. The signs that I see, the characters, it's just like looking at artwork because they, they have no purpose for direction. So that was Tiffany. And we thought, wow, that's pretty good. We trained Tiffany up in four days to make pretty good material that we could broadcast, so the others. Maybe there's something in this, maybe, because at that time we were thinking, how can we get low-cost video for our website? Um, everybody that was making video at the time wanted to charge television rates. And we thought, oh, maybe there's something in this. But what we knew was we needed to have a process. And I love this quote by Gary Hamill at Harvard University. Every CEO will at least give lip service to the idea that the world is moving faster and we need to do a better job at innovation. But if you go into an organization and ask people to, to describe their innovation system, you get blank looks. They have none. Most organizations have finance systems, they have HR systems. Most organizations talk about innovation but don't have an innovation system or an innovation process. So we came up with an innovation process which we called Travel Channel Academy. And basically we took that four-day course and we worked on it and worked on it and turned it into a course that could teach 40 people at a time. Um, we also um, decided that I would, as president of the network, I would speak at every event. It would have a dedicated executive producer, dedicated to the academy, so that the graduates of the academy could share their films with the network and get feedback from the channel. And we gave them, and we always held the meetings in our buildings. So they got some sort of sense of the network. So these are our fans, our super fans, and they paid us $2,500 for a four-day course, and in return, we taught them how to make travel video, and we told them what we were looking for. Earned, missing, but learn, shoot, earn, Travel Channel Academy. Now, what would happen at the end of each academy? We would spot some people who were ready to go, and those people we would employ on a piece rate basis straight away to start working for the network, delivering short films for um, our website. There were others who had ability, had potential, and what we'd say to them was, you upload your films to this particular website, and the executive producer that you've worked with for the last four days will give you feedback, and over time, if your work improves, you'll also get work from the network. The, the training business itself delivered high six figures in terms of value, but also we created this standing army of filmmakers around the country so that when we did America's Scariest Halloween Attractions 3, <laughs> and we needed, for an ad sales partner, 30 um, haunted attractions around the USA, we could go to 30 filmmakers that, that had been on the Academy we paid them $1,000 each. They delivered a three-minute film. We could recut those um, for the advertiser. We put some of them in the TV show. It was a model that worked for them. It was a model that worked for us. But it was the process that delivered us quality because we were able to explain to them what the brand was and what the brand values are. I'm going to skip the next film. Tiffany has now gone on to become TiffanyPainter.com. She is a very accomplished filmmaker now. She works with the Olsen twins and, and various others. And one of the things about this space is you have to accept that you're going to give away some value. Um, you know, I work for the BBC. We're quite used to capturing people and keeping them, if, if we can, inside our castle. In this new world, you have to accept you're going to give away some value. And people like Tiffany are going to go off and follow their own dreams. But if the relationship works, they will come back to you. And she's a much better filmmaker for it. So in 2010, I came back to the BBC. Um, and. Uh, took up my current job and we have a problem because my part of the business in-house production we're guaranteed 50% of the BBC's total business and we compete for a further 25% but we're only winning about 5% of that 25% the independent producers are winning 20 of the 25 now because we're not winning more hours um, we're not generating the intellectual property that BBC Worldwide needs to sell around the world to bring the profits back to support our programme-making efforts. So we needed more, better ideas. Uh, now, I've got 3,000 people working for in-house production, but only about 150 of them are designated as being in development. 
And so what we decided was that we would try and find a way to engage the other 2,850 people in the ideas process. And we came up with this idea called BBC iCreate. Now, BBC iCreate is an internal crowdsourcing platform which allows anybody in the business to submit an idea and allows anybody else in the business to comment on it. And we have two processes. We have one process which is called Pitch to Win. Anybody can submit any idea in any area uh, in Pitch to Win. And then we have a second uh, zone called the Challenge Zone where we will put particular areas uh, of interest. We'll make short films about particular areas of interest and give them a real brief and invite them to respond to the brief. So at the moment, we're looking at what we call the HD generation, the heads down generation of under 25s. Uh, and we're looking at coding, a big corporate priority around coding for 2015. So we put some stimulus in on coding and said, OK, come back with your ideas. Now, picking up from what Gary Hamill said again, and um, working with um, a company from Palo Alto called the Enterprise Development Group, we use this uh, process as the ideas backbone for um, BBC I Create. It's the six questions that everybody has to answer to submit their idea. So question one, who is the consumer and what is their unmet need? Who is this aimed at um, and what is their unmet need? Question two, what is the opportunity? That's about how big is this group and where might we find them? It invites people to think not just about TV but also to think about the web and mobile. Three, what's your story? What's the creative idea that you want to put in front of them? Four, who needs to be on the team? And this, again, is an opportunity. If you're thinking about projects which go beyond television but which are cross-platform, it gives you an opportunity to think about, I need a web designer, or I need a games master. Or if you're doing Top Gear, I need a celebrity booker, and I need first-class health and safety. Um, what is your competitive advantage? Why will your idea be anything else that's out there at the moment uh, or any other means of satisfying that need, and what results might you achieve? And that could be ratings, it could be revenue, it could be reputation, it could be uh, risk avoidance. But the bottom line is before an idea can become great, its brilliance has to be understood. So we rolled out this, this concept of CoStar by doing sessions all around the UK, probably got to 600, maybe 700 of our staff, where we took them through the challenges we were facing as a business, but also walked them through CoStar and how we use CoStar. And the benefit has been that we have a common language now. Once those ideas go into the system, people can respond to the CoStar elements. They don't, it, it's become less personal. I can ask you a question about the team. Do you think you've got the right team? Or I can ask you a question about, do you think that really is the opportunity? Can't that audience be served through this way or that way? It's made it a bit less personal and a bit... It's given everybody the language to take part. Uh, when I was in Wales, we had um, a woman who said she'd worked at the BBC for 23 years and had never been asked to submit an idea. Um, and all of us who work in big organisations, you know, if you work in newspapers, you've got the journalists, and it sort of presupposes that everybody else that works in the newspaper doesn't have an idea either. What this does is this enables everybody in the business to submit an idea. Uh, you can't really see that, but um, that was there just to show you the six boxes. Consumer, opportunity, story, team, advantage, and results. On this side of the thing, you can comment on an idea. So it's got a comments thread. It's also at the top got a vote up, vote down function. And after a period of time, normally four weeks, the ideas are then go into what we call expert review. And this is where this process dovetails with the traditional process, because if these ideas are going to go forward, it's the genre teams in the business that are going to take them forward. So this is like more bullets for the gun. Um, and, you know, it's so far, so good.
Over the money, the website, the list of the easy stuff, desperate to share domestic tips and horror stories. Mr. Mum was killing a fan club, but no focus. Then, Anne and Mort, the learned producer in Beauty Scotland, came to the rescue. Christine to read, how to get things really fat, and may I approach to find it. You read her, Christine inspired, but it's split in Latin. More identifying DNA, what men really, really wanted was a scientific approach to domestic life. Mr. Mum starts to take shape. And then, the BBC comedy department has been dressed. Now, our new best friends, Chris and Anne, have taken their scientific formula and signaled their survival stories and are working with the head of comedy to make Mr. Mum a little So just think about it, as a guy in health and safety who happens to have studied theatre studies at university, that's one of the benefits of asking for ideas from outside the usual categories. Um, he puts in this idea, Anne McNaught, who he's never met, he works in London, she works in Scotland, she happens to have read a book, and she puts into the website, have you read this book? And it's from those two things coming together that comedy as a department think this thing may have some traction. It's now, um, it's now a script in development, it's called Domestic Science, is actually going to Radio 4 for consideration. Um, but of the 3,000 um, people that we've got in BBC production, uh, 1,800 have logged in to iCreate in the eight months that it's been, in, it's been going. Um, we've had over 350 ideas submitted. Um, we have one definite commission. We have a number of projects, probably 10 projects now, in second stage development, which are being taken forward by the genre teams and being looked at by the commissioned editors. Just last week, we had 500 people take part in the new challenges around the Heads Down generation and coding. So 10 months on, you know, uh, almost a third of the people who've signed up came back in to engage with the new challenges. So that's uh, my presentation. I do believe in the inspirational amateur, but I think if you don't want to destroy your brand, you have to give them some process. Thank you.